the evil queen, jealous of Snow White, decides that Snow White must die. But the huntsman, sent by the queen to kill Snow White, cannot murder the innocent girl. Instead, he trains her to become a warrior who will threaten the queen's reign in Snow White and the Huntsman. We've all just seen it. It's not my favorite movie. How about you guys? You know, this is the second Snow White movie this year. We had Mirror Mirror, of course, with Julia Roberts come out earlier. Mm -hmm. And now we have Snow White and the Huntsman. And while Mirror Mirror went in a comedic direction, Snow White and the Huntsman seems to say, we're gonna reject that completely. I mean, they're, they're basically two different beasts here. Banish her to the woods. Is it done? Just as you instructed. I'm impressed. You're not as pathetic and wimpy as I have always believed. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Do you need a bowman? I have a bowman. Kill him. I said, do you need a bowman? It started off very, very strong in the first act because it was so scary. But then after the focus switched from Ravina, which was played by Charlize Theron, right. and it went to Kristen Stewart's Snow White, it lost a lot of steam. Okay, it is dark. It's dark and it's scary and there's weird sexual overtones and innuendo, which means that you probably wouldn't want to bring your kid to see this movie. It's not a family movie, but yet the dialogue, it's its a little weak. So to me, then it's not good enough to entertain an adult. There are such wonderful lines as, do you drink to drown your sorrows? But the dialogue kind of fit the genre. It reminded me a little bit of Robin Hood with Kevin Costner, and they had dialogue that was similar to that. That's not a good comparison I though. Know, I know, but, <laughs> but it was similar. I mean, when you watched it, you did probably think, Robin Hood. There's no levity in this movie whatsoever. Things that should provide a little bit of humor don't. You've got Kristen Stewart in the movie, which means what are you trying to do? You're trying to attract the tween Twilight audience, and then we remove romance from the movie. If, if a fairy tale should have anything, it should have romance. There's a few moments where like, we're in the fairy world and that's kind of nice, but again, it's brief and you never really get to, to see, like the dwarves don't have a fun, kooky world to go into, so it, it really is dark. What surprises me about the writing of this movie is that I had read the original spec script that had sold and it was not joyless. It was really fun, it was action-packed, and it was very concise. And the end product it was not what I had read originally. And then when I saw the credits, there were two extra names attached to the original writer. So something had gone along the way that had greatly changed wow. this story. And there are so many, I call them the WTF moments of where did this come from? For instance, when she escapes from the castle and then there's a magical white horse that takes okay. her out. And it's just like, where did this white horse come from? And from the original spec script, there was no problems like that. I think it was crazy. To me, I, it, I felt like it was sort of spoofing the like the Disney version of Snow White because again, you've got the, the the great deer creature in the woods that was sort of like a very classic Disney moment, but it wasn't campy anywhere through the rest of the movie. That aspect of it weakens Kristen Stewart. She's okay in the movie. Mm -hmm. I think she's fine as an actress. I just don't think that she has anything to work with because she's such a thin character as, mm -hmm. as it's written. And in this movie, she had a love triangle between the prince and the mm -hmm. huntsman, and there was no heat between the three actors. None of them really professed their love for each other. I never got the sense that Kristen Stewart was interested in either one of yeah, those well, actually, guys. Actually, I kind of liked that part. <laughs> I, I thought she's an independent woman. Okay. She doesn't really have to go and have a romantic ending. The strongest performance was Charlize Theron. She was terrifying, and every time she was on screen, it was scary. Come and avenge your father, who was too weak to raise his sword. If anybody wanted to watch this movie, her performance makes it worth watching. But even with her, like I'm watching, there's certain moments where she has the big close-up scream. Mm. And again, it goes into cartoon land, which would be okay if there was more cartoon magic in the film. But there were a couple moments where I was just very much taken out of the film by her over the top yowling. I think the strength of the visual effects though hid a lot of the 
problems with the story of what we didn't see. So the forest, it looked so cool. It did. Um, Ravina's costumes looked great, and then when she had her special effects, it looked so great that I think that they relied on the special effects to hide problems with the world. And for me, th those were the moments in the movie where I was drawn in the special effects, the mirror on the wall, um, her costume, the crows. You know, some of these things were very eye-catching. You could see it was a big budget. There was just nothing to fill it out. Who's the proposed audience for this picture? You, you can't take little kids to this picture. I mean, the queen is basically sucking the life out of young women. That's how she's, mm -hmm. you know, reviving herself. Well, and there's fondling in the beginning part of that movie, too. Yeah. But yet it's not good enough. It's not crafted enough to keep an adult entertained. And it's so very L.A. I mean, that was just the other thing I was thinking. You know, we're just, we're comparing these women. We don't really have a twist. There's nothing modern on this. Maybe that's why this movie needed to be made because of the LA thing where everyone just gets their plastic surgery, they want to look different. Maybe this movie was supposed to be a message movie and it just didn't work out. I don't know if it was a message movie. It, to me the message was you better get your plastic surgery done so that you don't lose power in the world. I, I don't think we're gonna have a long debate about who the fairest one of them all is at this table because I went out every time. So let's take our tickets and vote. So Snow White and the Huntsman says nothing new. It shows us nothing new. I give it a skip it. Huh. Snow White and the Huntsman is a well-crafted, well-oiled machine, but it lacks a heart. Skip it. While this is not a bad movie, it was greatly disappointing because it didn't live up to its potential. Stream it. Our votes add up to a half ticket, which is a skip it. All right, I'll reflect on that. To the fairest of them all. <laughs> no, 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 Huntsman. No one's ever seen this before.